All right, Sultai Flash. For those that aren't familiar, the Flash in this deck's name refers to the Flash mechanic, which allows you to play your creatures that have that mechanic at instant speed. So blue-green Flash has been pretty popular. Um, this is basically that kind of core with um, some black removal spells splashed in. So one of the things the blue-green Flash deck struggles with is being able to kill resolved creatures in permanent. So things like Assassin's Trophy and Tyrant's Court and Disfigure allow us to do that in a really elegant manner. The thing we're trading off for that ability to interact with permanents like that, though, is consistency in the mana base. And losing those extra dual lands is going to be a tough time. Now, that being said, we speaking of time, we did gain once upon a time, though. And while this also gives us extra threat density and lets us find things like our Night Pack Ambushers more consistently, this card is mana fixing in a way, right? Like, this card's going to let us see more cards per game to try and find our lands to actually let us cast our spells. So... Let's go ahead and dive on into a constructed event with this one and uh, see see how it goes. We gotta we gotta start farming our gold back up, chat. We spent we spent hundred k gold on booster packs today. Had a good run today with Abzan Hero. Yeah, mid range decks like Abzan Hero are gonna largely depend on how much like Golos and Yarok Field ends up being played in the format. And like right now, early in the format, I think even if Golos and Yarok Field are good, those decks aren't gonna be played too much just by virtue of the fact that like people wanna try new things. But I think once the novelty wears off a little bit, people are gonna go back to playing those style of decks more. And thanks for the nine months, Punisher Dumpster. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Let's cast this now so I can see if I find a two drop I want to play. Another Night Pack Ambusher. All right. Well. Ow, ow. We've got, we've got some wolves, chat. We've got, we've got some wolves. Well. Questing Beast is very good. In case, in case anybody was wondering, Questing Beast is great. Hey, look, you know what else is great? Assassin's Trophy is great. King Tower! Let's get you a sword to go with that shield. Thanks for keeping me around. I appreciate the continued support. Cast down has in fact rotated out. It is going, going, gone. We won't answer that, so I can play this as an untapped land, which is hot. We just like have running night pack ambushers for the next few turns here. <laughs> For years, do I win? What do I win? You win this very beautiful castle, Trey. Thank you for the four incredible years of support. That's like that's like an entire Declan's worth of years. Thanks for keeping me around. I appreciate it. Hope you're having an excellent Thursday. Happy release day. Man, let me tell you about this basic swamp, chat. Wide eyes, no fear, snap attack. You ever heard of Scrag and Hellkite squeal, chat? Have you ever you ever heard of Scrag and Hellkite squeal? Squeal for me, baby. Squeal for me. All right, fine. We'll trade.
Fine, we'll trade. Woof. Woof, my puppy. My poor puppy, chat. RQR Master X, that's no slouch of a number of months either. Thank you for the 44. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Yikes. I think we've died. Because Domri, Domri makes their creatures uncounterable. This is not a great scene for us. And the problem here is I'm through three of my wolves, so like my closing power is pretty significantly hampered once they once they fight this here. The shock for our night pack ambusher attack was was brutal. Yeah, I should play all these lands out because we have the the one one that draws cards, so I wanna play as many lands as possible. Thanks. All right, it's okay. There's like a pile of noxious grass on my sideboard, I'm pretty sure. By a pile, I mean two, apparently. That might not be enough. No, I've not worked on your arc field at all, Jace. I think I probably just want monsters instead of counter spells at my top end. Oh, when it gets pretty bad. I've had a lot of, lot of build-around submissions for the queue, so mostly just working on things that people have submitted. Maybe maybe we'll take some of the built the uh, dealer's choice submissions people have sent in and build Yarok Field with those. I have a lot of people asking about that one. It's definitely a fan favorite. Noxious Grass with four of it all times. Maybe. So we have a two-lander here. This plus this, maybe three. Uh, I brought them in against then the control matchup too, Doc Prof. Just to uh, increase threat density. Pro tip, cast once upon a time before your other spell. Yikes. Man, that is the second time today we've kept once upon a time, hoping to draw land and then missed. At least we have an opt this time. Good lord. Remember when I said that we shouldn't play another ranked match because magic's an incredibly high variance game? Do you do you remember that, chat? Do you remember that? Remember that? We're off, we're off the rails. The train, the train has crashed. We're done here. Alright, that's. It's been a hot... I need to restart Arena anyways because it's a dumpster fire that's lagging. Let's play the How Unlucky Were We game. How... How unlucky were we? How many lands are in that deck? Is it 22 or 23? There's 23 lands. There were 22 lands in our deck. We had 5 plus 2 with op plus a draw step. We had 8 looks. We were looking for 1 land. We were 99.1% to find a second land that game. We we are the 1%, just not in the way that Bernie Sanders hates. It's not it's not the 1% you want to be in, chat. It's not it's not a good scene. All right, once more under the breach. Hashtag never lucky. Shuffler's still broken. Shuffler confirmed flat, right? We, 
We are the 0.9%. Don't tax my money. That means we're going to draw the nuts next day. Right, that is exactly how cumulative variance works. You are, you are exactly correct. Is there nobody else playing the constructed event yet? Is everybody playing limited? Because it's a release day? It's been the most fun. So far today, Blue Red Allegiance has been my favorite. Everybody's here watching, right? Yeah, yeah, long queue times on release day. Oh no, oh no, that can't be good. Tomas is here to save us from the queue time. God bless. Every single one of the Underlord streamers I follow is paid to play Arena today. God bless. That is that is such a good use of a good use of their advertising dollars. Top three objectively best most powerful cards from ELD. Uh, cards aren't objectively powerful. Cards are powerful inside of the format that they're played in. And which cards which cards are good or bad depends on which other cards people are playing. Yeah, even Savits. Savits is a great person to pay money to. Hot, hot, here's a, here's a blisteringly hot take. Savits has probably created more new Magic players than the entirety of the rest of the MPL combined. If I, if I was a gambling man and you asked me which had created more Magic players, Savits or the other 31 MPL, my money would be on Savits. Sumo Goat, thanks for the quarter of a year of support. I appreciate that. Welcome. Thanks for keeping me around. I don't think I asked this, but how's Mythgard? Mythgard is awesome. Mythgard, Mythgard is a really innovative mix of both familiar and new. It takes take some of the crappy parts out of uh take some of the crappy parts of magic and gets rid of them. And their their software is very good. It's not quite as pretty as Arena, but it's more stable and has more features. This figure sounds excellent. Is Fabled Passage as good as it seems? Fabled Passage is playable. Not not absurd, just playable. Let's just witch figure this now. I don't know, Greaseball. I feel like I feel like if the goal of the MPL was just to be a carrot, you wouldn't really invest more money into it past like the existing Pro Tour system. Like the existing Pro system was like already a carrot. Am I going to do the event on stream? Which event? The every card. I don't even know if I'm going to bother playing in that. We'll probably bother playing in it. And again, it'll probably be on stream. But it doesn't, it doesn't, I have, I have all the cards already. Chad, are you new here? This is a pay to win stream. Okay. Oh, you know what? This is wrong. I should have cast once upon a time first. Okay, sweet. We hit. We hit, we hit what we were looking for anyways. But I should have, I should have once before committing there. So I could know what land I'm getting from once and get the other color off the, the Fabled Passage, potentially. We did, we did lose round one, which puts us in the card Zion bracket. You're not wrong.
He's been murdered. Would you like to attack into my wolf? Oh, honey, you knew the wolf was there. Why aren't we playing this on the ladder? I think it will lose a lot of matches. I would be surprised if this archetype is good. We also we also hit a ladder rank where I think I cannot play any more ladder matches and top 1200 this season. So we're gonna we're gonna attempt to not play any more ladder matches between now and the end of the month and just play decks in the in the cube in the old constructed event. Got a farmer, got a farmer gold stash back up anyways. Do you think there's a good flash deck? I'd honestly be kind of surprised. I think the flash archetype is a style of deck that people really hate playing against. So playing against this deck always feels worse than the deck actually is. Like people get so annoyed they don't realize they're winning. Like, the games you beat the flash decks feel bad. And like, playing decks like this on the other side could also be an incredibly satisfying experience. So I like, I like playing them, but often they tend to be underpowered. You think, I think decks like this are what I would describe as emotionally taxing to play against. Which is why people have a pretty visceral reaction to them, on average. I've been there, I quit against every flash deck and still hate it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I'm gonna just bring in some more spot removal here. Trim this and trim a piece of our top end. A bug, a bug they added in this stable, nice stable, no longer beta release is our foils are randomly faded while sideboarding. It's a good feature. It's a deck built around hoping you get ahead and one forty opponents they give up. Yeah, yeah, these decks, aside from the 4-4 four, four wolf, this archetype doesn't really have a catch-up mechanic. Like, it doesn't generate card advantage. So, like, if you fall behind in a card adva a game that card advantage matters, you, you fall behind very quickly. So actually, it's funny. So one of the things, I do think the event that they have coming up where you can win one of every card is great because it lets people sample things. The Mythgard card game that I streamed a little bit of yesterday that I've been playing on mobile a little bit too, one of the things that their developers did that's just so absurdly smart is every player in Mythgard gets two community-built decks that are competitive that rotate twice per week for you that you can play without owning any of the cards in them. So it gives people the ability to sample real constructed decks without spending any money. And it it's good to, you want to convince people that they want to give you money, right? So like letting them sample is great. In fact, I spent, I spent like four hours playing just the sample decks before I, I decided to buy actual cards. This is unfortunately still tapped. That's gonna fetch our second green source here, it looks like. Yeah. If you're someone looking for a new mobile card game, because Magic's probably never coming to mobile, Mythgard I would highly recommend. It's very good. I really need to try they have a they have a two they have a 2v2 mode that I need to try at some point. That's that's something that's like a feature request that like Arena's probably never gonna have. So, this is a 2-1, and I could probably play both of these. I like Champions as a card game, MTG Wiki. It's just not popular, and it's probably never going to be. Games, games like, the game's been out for a year, and the queue times are kind of medium. The gameplay is very good in that game, but, you know, it's the games market is a really hard market to break into. Lots of, lots of people who have good games and decent software fail. 
Maybe I'm just supposed to trade here, actually. Yeah, I'm probably just supposed to trade there. I'm like a disfigure or something here? Nope. You seen any mono black decks today? Just the one our current opponent is playing. We played against a bunch of red black aggro today. This is the first time I could watch this becoming a sub. Thanks for the random gift from who, whom I forgot. You can check your Twitch notifications to see, see who you got stuff from if you ever do forget. Perfect. Fabled Passage finds this blue. One thing of note so far, like, just things to think about while we're playing is like, our man has been functional so far, which is one of the big questions I have. Touch painful with all the shock lands, but we have been able to cast our spells every game, which is nice. Rankle was very impressive. I'd be, I would honestly be surprised if there's not a competitive Rankle deck somewhere in this format. There have been many times where you want to exile versus Tyrant Scorn. Uh, I haven't been keeping track. I think score I think Scorn having the flexibility to bounce my own creatures is a big deal. When do we want to cast our once upon a time? You want to wait as long as possible to cast this card, ideally. Because you want to have the most information when you do finally cast it. Um, I'm take another Frilled Mystic here, I think. And I'm casting Once Upon a Time here because I want to play Brine Boar Cutthroat this turn. Which then um, would make this cost mana. So I want to cast this for free before I cast this card. How long are we going to? I think this is going to be my last deck. Uh, my viewer count tends to drop off in the evening because I am uh, primarily a daytime streamer. But I will I will definitely be back tomorrow at 7 a.m. Well, I think I'm going to bottom this because I already have two. And they have a chance to resolve something next turn. So, like, if they resolve a Wilderness Reclamation, I want to be able to, uh, like, draw a trophy or something to kill it. If I'm doing Eldraine and Modern anytime soon, Monday we will go back to my my previous uh, typical schedule. So Monday Monday next week we'll start with Modern and then roll into Standard. So I think I think next week will probably be one Modern deck per day while Standard still hype. And then we'll go back to two modern a day, most likely, when the standard numbers drop off again. But it can be hard to tell exactly how long it takes for numbers to drop off. Flame sweep. Um, I think that's fine. Actually, let's just do this, right? Yeah, let's just do this. If they have like an expansion explosion here, we could get in trouble or another flame sweep in hand. If they have second flame sweep in hand, I'm going to be sad. 
That's fine, though. This worked out. This worked out pretty well. Yeah, this Escape to the Wilds is very good. How much to play standard submissions? For subscribers, standard deck submissions are just $10. And as always, you can find all of the details about how my deck queue system works on my website here. And whenever the bot finally decides to post it, that is. Watsy's trying to steal $100 from me. How's that? All right, so I paid them $100, but I don't have my gem. Well, your mistake was sending them money on release day. You should you should know better than that. Come on now. Yeah, the bot's really been struggling. I think that's how I want to board, just like counter spells. Counter spells in, random spot removal out. Like it, let's keep the wilds. It's a lot like commune with lava. Yeah. The bot also can't time out mods. That's true. Very, very true. The bot, the bot suddenly caught up with all the messages all at once. Oh, oh, MTG bot. Oh, MTG bot. Um, sure. Perfect. Just just like we drew it up. This card this card's excellent in this deck. Uh Cardboard Live does not have an installer for the operating system that I'm using, Fitzpill. They also, from my understanding, they also don't have the option to turn the deck mode off, and Stream Decker integrates with my website, so I'd rather update up upload to Stream Decker. Deck Deckmaster's open source. I should probably when we hit when we hit the low time for the set release, I think I'm gonna fork Deckmaster. And just maintain the updates myself. Cause it should be it should be trivially easy to add new sets to Deckmaster. The person that maintains it just like takes their sweet time. Yeah, yeah, Beanstalk, Beanstalk Giant sounds great. Sweet. Uh, probably want a black source. Let's just go ahead and bump this back to their hand here. Bumpy. Eh, let's shock this in. Maybe they don't give us anything to do and we can play the borrower out. What language is Deckmaster in? It is uh, Java. It's a it's a web app basically. I forget what the what the word is. It's basically um an embedded web app though. I'm blanking blanking on the on the name of that. Vu, yeah, Electron Electron Vu is the the core of the desktop app. The tricky, the trickier part and harder than actually forking it is you have to, you have to submit your own um, extension stuff to Twitch, which is, which will be a little annoying. Are your thoughts on Drawn in the Lock and Modern? Drawn in the Lock's probably excellent in Modern. There's enough fetch lands, there's enough one drops that it's going to kill a lot of stuff that you care about.
Has, how is how are that play pattern? Bounce your card, bounce your card, counter your card. Not not bad Dutch GPG. So let's do this. And then let's brazen borrow or this. Bye, Felicia. Bye, -bye. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's the really big thing is that tempoing them there didn't cost us a card really because we still have these. Like borrower, borrower is real good. Like I said, I don't think this, this archetype is great, but it's definitely very satisfying to play. I'd be lying if I didn't say the Brazen Borrower animation is a significant reason, a significant part of the reason to play this archetype. Oh no, are they gonna shock this and then opt or something? Just two for one eight, rude. It's not the removal spell I wanted for Christmas. I think I'm bottoming that. I have so many threats right now. I'm really just looking for a Doom Blade. Does Watsy really not offer a card API? They don't. And to be to be fair, in Wizard's defense, uh, Blizzard also doesn't offer an official API for Hearthstone. Actually, it's funny, the Mythgard game we were talking about, one of the things, I really appreciate good software as a hobbyist software developer. And one of the things the Mythgard people do is they maintain their own Twitch extension and it's built into their client. Like, to enable the MythGuard Twitch extension, I literally just had to check a box in the options menu. Deal. Alright, well, I mean, they're on empty now, right? And I've got stuff. Yeah, I mean, the games market's just very tough to break into, third degree. I plan to, um, I plan to stream a little bit of it after the magic, a little more of it after the magic new set hype dies down a bit, but it's hard to, I can't carve out too much time because, like, magic's my actual job, right? And smaller, smaller games just don't pay the bills. I'm actually kind of surprised they're playing this now. I feel like they want it, they should save this for their next turn. So that way they can uh, use it to trigger this again. Last, last standard set wasn't great to be fair. At any rate, Rage Harder, good to have you back. Thank you for the very generous tier three resub. I appreciate that. Hope you're having a good one wherever you are. Thematically, this new set is fantastic. As far as the gameplay, we've only played for, you know, the six hours I've been playing today because uh, I don't have access to the early access stuff that Wizards gives to some people. So I don't have as much experience with the set as some other people. Well, we'll, de we'll develop more informed opinions over the next few days, though. I don't see a link for abs and wolves. So decks in the queue that don't have a link next to them means that they are build around submissions that I have not built yet. So those those decks will get deck links added to the queue when they get closer to the top because I'll build them as they get closer to the top. I think I want to just draw here again. I don't think I want to just jam this. Could be wrong. 
It might be right to just jam this, because then I have lethal. They have to have, they have to have a removal spell. Since they're at three. One frilled mystic, please. Read. So this oh wait. No, this can't bounce. This is this is already it. Bounce something. I didn't borrow her because I think I'm far enough ahead here that I I would rather draw more cards. In the event I play borrower and my opponent in the event I play Borrower there and my opponent has removal spells to not die, I get incredibly far behind because I have no card advantage left. So I felt like the only way I lose this game where I'm ahead is if my opponent has the removal spells there, so I don't want to give them a chance to have a removal spell. Yes, Ambusher was also an out because they were only dealing three and an another Ambusher would have made my Wolf Token a 4-4. It's a good, good observation. How much later am I going to go? Uh, probably another half hour, 45 minutes with this deck. We can play one or two more matches, depending on how they go. We'll probably we'll probably play this deck uh, until we lose lose the second match in this league. Hey, remember Pedro Headshots? Magic Arena is an officially released 1.0 piece of software. It's no longer buggy and in beta. Magic. Magic Arena was definitely ready to be released and it was in no way pushed out ahead of schedule to meet an arbitrary deadline to appease shareholders. Um, eh. At least they fixed the lag issue. They did, they did fix the lag issue. My client now crashes before it becomes laggy. So that, that's kind of a bug fix, right? In a, in a way. I see you change your tune about not kissing wizards, but it just I'm puckering up. I'm just giving them giving them all the butter. Four man and nickel bolas is rotated. Ritual of soot. I think I just let this happen, huh? I feel like I want to negate a planeswalker more than this. Fabled passage gets me another island. Can I greed here and just take Ambusher? I'm gonna greed here and take Ambusher. We'll draw another blue source. Famous, famous last words. Yikes, yikes. I, I deserve that draw. I mean, to be fair, I say plenty of nice things about Wizards of the Coast, you know, and they deserve to have nice things said about them. They do, they do occasionally make good decisions and produce good things. Like, to give a compliment where compliments are due, the, the animations in this latest set, while they make the client unbearably laggy at times, they're very well done. So, I have to give up... I have to give up a 2-2 there, but I think it's right to try and hit my land. Yeah, the swamp kind of sucks, but there has to be a swamp in the deck, so Fabled Passage has a has a black source to get. Is the is the TLDR? All right, scale of one to dead. Where's this night pack ambusher at? Because if it ain't dead, you definitely are. Uh, 
Uh, we've played Oko. Oko's fine. I don't know that I'd call Oko impressive. Um, the Great Henge is great. Uh, Rankle was good. Uh, the the blue red planeswalker was quite excellent today. Really enjoyed that one. I think I just let this happen, right? Just like here's my mystics enjoy. You say Fabled Passage made this mana base better. Honestly, I think Once Upon a Time did more for the mana base in this deck than anything else. So Disfigure and Tyrant Scoring can both come out here. Dispute and Stroke seem good. Click Submit. Seems fine. Thought Eraser into Concede. It's a really... Why do people play that card if they just concede after they cast it? it seems loose. Seems loose. Loose. Hey, Moniz. Thanks for the biddies. Happy, happy Thursday. Remember, folks, we're going to be going for a little bit more tonight. This is my last deck today. I will be live um, from 7 a.m. till at least 5 p.m. tomorrow. Planning to do... At least 10 hours tomorrow and Saturday. Lots of lots of great decks coming up. A couple people have been asking about the standard decks page on my website. I'm planning to scrape out at least, you know, three or four of some of the best decks from these first three days of streaming and put them up on this on the standard decks page website on Sunday. This want Veil of Summers? No, I think you'd rather just have counter spells. I think you'd rather have things that can disrupt their actual threats rather than protecting your own. Yeah, Blue Steel will stay in the queue for tomorrow, Wiku. Anything anything that's in a title that we don't necessarily have time to get to always, always stays in and gets moved to the next day. Seems fine. We'll play a Temple on one so that way we can opt after we Cutthroat to make the Cutthroat bigger. And by that, I mean we're getting to rest. So long, so long, opt. Negate's a good one to pick up after they dress us. It's a good one to have be a surprise. Suno Tam, thank you for the three quarters of year. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Sure. The best thing about Blue Steel is the playset of Silent Submersible. Ain't that the truth? Oh, two different ways to beat the reanimate? Sign me up. Red Rover, Red Rover, let Rick's Maddie come over. So I get to negate any non-creature spell this turn, and the next turn we have Frilled Mystic up. I'm also going to get to opt this turn, so my Cutthroat's going to be a 4-3. Get to start clocking in here, which is nice. The artwork on Fabled Passage is stunning, too. Just got off work. Can't wait to watch the replays. Any hot takes from today? Um, the Great Hedge is great, would be my big takeaway from today. I think card's quite powerful. It's Blue Steel. Blue Steel is a blue artifact creature deck. And as always, if you're new and you're wondering what in the heck does that deck mean, you can always check out various decks on the deck queue page of my website. All the, all the sweet things we have coming up are linked there and well organized. All right. I don't think I want to attack with this. I want to just stay conservative here. If Ink Gaming, yeah, Ink Gaming's a U.S. company, so all the prices on their website should be U.S. Do I... 
It feels like they're just auto passing. It's probably it's definitely greedy to draw there, but they're auto passing, so get him. Bump Abzan Wolf, please. Will do, Moniz. Now uh, I'll take your 500 bits from earlier today for that too. Which will probably get it pushed into tomorrow. Yeah, but something to think about sometimes, Dude Light, is decks getting better or worse isn't strictly just like what they gained. What other people lost is often just as important. It's something to think of. And if I negate this murderous rider, it doesn't even go to exile, right? It just goes to the graveyard. Yeah, when you counter when you counter the adventures, they're just gone. Which is super powerful. All right, coffee's for closers. Get in there. Get in there. Cut through it. I would, I would, for the record, I would also be surprised if there's a good Grixis deck in this format. But just, just highlighting generically why you don't automatically want to write things off just because they didn't sp explicitly gain new tools. So, if they have, like, blood from bones here and a land, that's not a big deal because I have an Assassin's Trophy to clear their dragon out, and they don't, uh, wow, brutal. Okay, that's fair. That's a Death Toucher. I guess Brazen Borrower is just going to, like, kick this back up, right? Just, like, no big. The end of their next turn will kick this back to their hand and start smushing again. Look, what you're asking is for me to keep an open mind and approach this with reason and logic, but I'm an American, so feelings are greater than facts, and I feel like Grixis sucks. God bless. At least you know where you're coming from. I always, I always appreciate people that can identify their bias and, uh, you know... It's a strong, it's a strong move to be able to identify your own bias. All right, let's shock this in. Go. Chirp. Sure. Played this deck a whole bunch. I cut through it. Reminds me of a Danto Vanguard and Feather. It's not the best card in the deck, but it's frequently the best card. Yeah, I agree, Zikta. This card, this card is a big part of why this archetype is playable. Not just the wolf. The wolf's obviously very good. But this card, this card is also excellent. Uh, the adventure creatures adhere to the normal timing restriction. So this has flash, so I can play it at any time. But a non a non-flash adventure creature you cannot play at any time. Yeah, borrower, borrower is very good. We had a we had a pair of borrowers in the we had a pair of borrowers in the blue red alliance deck that we played. And there's good, good like good tempo play answer answer get problem permanent off the table for a turn or two, which is nice. Cleans up tokens elegantly. Any chance of a duo stream coming up? Nah, not likely. Kent, Kent actually moved out to the left coast. Yeah, the name on Brazen Borrower is weird. How do you feel about Borrower being mythic as opposed to a rare? I think Brazen Borrower is a mythic because Wizards of the Coast is a for-profit company that's trying to make, make money for their shareholders. That's... That's, oh, you know what? I think I messed up here. You know what? I know I messed up here. I should have, I should have once before playing my land. I should have once before playing my land so I could temple on one there or play a shock land tapped. That, that's definitely what I should have done. They're 
like creature creature here and then we're dead. Yeah. Yeah, yikes. I don't know what cards you're referring to with those with those questions, ET War. I would like a bunch of removal spells, please. Thank you. Brazen Borrower's pretty bad here. Negate's fine. I'm trim an opt. Not always gonna have extra mana lying around to do something with that. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, this is going to be our last one of the day, Peak Inferno. I'll be back, be back tomorrow morning about 7 o'clock. I no, don't want to go too late because I want to actually be able to sleep tonight. Because remember, after after I sign off, I've got another hour and a half worth of stuff to do to get everything uploaded to YouTube and all that jazz. Go through deck submissions. I'm going to lead on this like I should have led on this last time so that we find a shock land or a temple we can get in, get our tap land down. No. Once you've, once you've put this on the stack, this is no longer free because you've already cast a spell. Putting this, the action of putting this on the stack is casting it. Stormfish Crusader has been sweet. Yep. That was definitely a standout in the the black red wrinkle deck that we played. There's figuring out how to build black red aggro is gonna be gonna be interesting in this format. Murderous Rider's great. A lot of a lot of these adventure creatures are very good. How how many times? Can we keep a hand with once upon a time needing it to hit a land and brick? One, one begs the question, how many times can we keep a hand with once upon a time expecting to hit a land and brick? Quite frequently is the answer, good lord. We are actually just the unluckiest. Actually, actually just the unluckiest. My deck's just like, I'll teach you to, I'll teach you to count on this card as the land, hog land. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody giving you mana. Can we get some Hyper Geo going? Yikes. Uh, I guess I, I guess I have Tyrant Scorn to kill the Phoenix here, huh? Um, actually, let's destroy this, and then I'll fetch a forest, and we'll trophy this next turn, huh? That's the better play. Let's preserve our health total here. The real question is, if I brick on a land, do I once trying to find another green source? I think I'm supposed to. Because Fabled Passages are untapped at this point. I think I'm supposed to do this. We're going to brick and die, but yeah. Feels, feels bad, man. You can at least negate a Chandra or a Cavaclade this turn, or a Burn Spell. Okay. I'm not dead yet. Third Cavaclade. Whew. Whew. Not third Cavaclade. One Disfigure, please. One Tyrant Scorn, please. Okay. 
No! Oh, that was a mistake. Now we're dead. Alright, alright. I think we're probably dead there, even if I don't play that card. But, yeah. Yeah. Well, look at that. Look at that. Made 500 gold and 20 gems. Building, building our gold stash back up. Yeah, and on, I don't know. As someone who loves these flash style decks, um, even even with Brazen Borrower, while Once Upon a Time helps smooth the mana a little bit in this archetype in a great way, I always felt like the core problem of this deck is like, it's like a get ahead, stay ahead type deck, which means your games that you're on the draw and the games that you're playing against decks full of one drops just tend to be really feel bad. You just... They, the, when people start to double spell underneath you, you you get behind and you can't catch back up. Um, in the attrition games, your only real card advantage is these two cards. And like, if they get, and it's possible for them to one for one this card advantage too, right? So the only real two for one in this deck is like Frilled Mystic. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think, I think this is a style of deck that people think it's better than it is because it feels really bad to lose to, and it feels really good to win with. And I think that that obscures people's feelings about it altogether. At any rate, that's going to be it for me for today, folks. I really appreciate it. I'm going to run one more ad break at the end here to meet my quota for the day. And uh, I'll be back tomorrow at 7 a.m. Central Standard Time. Remember, if you missed any of the decks that we played today, we played five different decks. They're all going to head up to my YouTube channel here shortly. You'll also be able to find them in my Twitch highlights almost immediately. So hopefully see all of you all around tomorrow and Saturday. And remember, if we have good viewer counts on those days, I'm going to run extra long. So come hang out if you want to see lots of standard stuff. Hide, hide the starting soon text while we put this up. <laughs>